We do know that periodic orbits can occur in discrete time dynamical systems, but how? How do we find them? How do we make sense of them? Well, recall, we found a few examples of periodic orbits, really simple ones, low period, like two or three, but where did these examples come from? How did I come up with them? How do we find other periodic orbits, and maybe most importantly, how do we determine their stability without having to resort to simulating and taking a guess? Well, let's think. What's the definition of a period P orbit in a discrete time dynamical system? Well, what that means is that you have some solution x of n so that x of n plus P equals x of n for all values of n. That's it, that's the definition, but now let's convert that using operator notation. If we think about the entire periodic orbit x, then what has to be satisfied is that x is really equal to e to the p x, where e is the shift operator and e to the p means you do it p times. That's really what that definition means. And since e x equals f of x, we could write this as saying that x is really fp of x, where by f with a superscript p in parenthesis, I mean the p-fold composition. f composed with f composed with f. Do that p times. That's really what the pth power of that shift operator enacts in this case. Now, that composition has to fix the entire periodic orbit as equilibria. The big idea is that any period p orbit x in the discrete time dynamical system, e x equals f of x, really corresponds to p equilibria of the system e x equals f to the p of x. Now that idea is going to make a lot more sense if we see it in the context of an example. Recall the periodic orbits that we found in a certain logistic model. This is the model EX equals F of X, where F of X is 7 halves X times quantity 1 minus X. One of the things that we noted was that there's a period 2 orbit that consists of the points 3 sevenths and 6 sevenths. You just bounce back and forth between those. Okay, now in order to see that as a set of equilibria, we have to look at e squared of x. That is f of f of x. So I take f of x and everywhere there's an x, I put in f of x. So we get seven halves times quantity, seven halves x times one minus x, times quantity one minus seven halves x times one minus x. Now, if I multiply that out, simplify it a little bit, I get minus 49 eighths times x times quantity 7x cubed minus 14x squared plus 9x minus 2. And I claim that the points 3 sevenths and 6 sevenths are equilibria for this system. And we could keep going. We could look for period 4 orbits or other periods as well. Now, does this really work? What do these compositions look like? If we draw the diagram associated to this system, if I look at the graph of f of x, then what we noted was that at 3 sevenths and 6 sevenths, there is precisely a period 2 orbit. Great. Now, if I superimpose on that the graph of f composed with f, that fourth order polynomial passes through the diagonal exactly at these two points on the periodic orbit. Now, it may cross elsewhere as well, including at the equilibria for the original model. Now, this is really cool because not only can we see that period 2 orbit, but if we move off of it, we can see that it is unstable and that one actually seems to be converging to a stable periodic orbit of period 4. I wonder what happens if we superimpose on top of this the fourth order composition, f composed with f composed with f composed with f. Aha, it passes precisely through those points and at an interesting sort of slope. 
All of this goes to suggest that because we can interpret the periodic orbits as equilibria of these composed systems, we can apply the stability criterion to that composition in order to determine the stability of periodic orbits. And that's a really helpful idea. If we go back, if we look at this period two orbit, consider F composed with F, and then we take the derivative of that right-hand side. We take the derivative of that fourth-order polynomial, evaluate that either at three-sevenths or at six-sevenths, then what do we get? Well, computing the derivative is not so bad. I'm going to get negative 49 eighths times quantity 28x cubed minus 42x squared plus 18x minus 2. Evaluate that at three-sevenths or at six-sevenths, either of the two points on the periodic orbit, and boom, you get the same answer. You get negative five-fourths. Because that is greater than one in absolute value, you have an unstable periodic orbit of period two. Now, what would it take to show that that period four orbit is in fact a stable periodic orbit? I'm gonna let you do the math on that one. The big idea is that finding periodic orbits is really the same thing as finding equilibria of an iterate of the map. Now, this is potentially very helpful as it gives us a way to test stability. We're not gonna need this directly in what we're going to be doing, but remember this idea because it will come back.